Welcome back to another video this is a part 16 of. What if Issei fell in love with Sona after Rias broke his heart? I don't really want to drag out the intro so let's get started. Chapter 60. Sona's Chance. A high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 60. Never an Empty Bed. Scene, Hyodo Home. The elevator door opens. Issei is huffing and puffing as he races down the hallway and toward his bedroom. Luckily, this was later in the evening and mostly everyone was in bed. Finally, Issei stops at his front door while opening it and closing it behind him quietly. Taking a deep breath, the team felt that he was in the clear. All he needed to do was tear down any and all perverted materials while making damn sure that none of his porn was in an easily accessible area. Easy sauce, Issei thought as he flipped the light switch. Asia, Issei was surprised to see Asia who was wearing only a white Ku High School t-shirt and possible panties laying on his bed. Nervously smiling back at Issei, Asia nodded. I thought I'd take advantage of some time alone with you, Issei. Issei looked Asia over in a double take before his eyes wandered toward a few posters on his wall. Instantly, the teen's anxiety returned as he dashed onto his bed. This made Asia blush heavily, that was until she watched Issei frantically tear down the poster behind where she was laying. Tilting her head, Asia questioned. Issei, what are you doing? I gotta get rid of anything and everything that is lewd and boobalicious before, SS Sona gets up here. Issei spotted another poster and dashed toward it like a wild animal. Issa nodded with a puzzled smile. Right. Okay then, well, I'll help you. Issei stopped what he was doing and darted toward Asia while falling to his knees. Thank you, Asia, you're so kind. This made Asia blush intensely. Issei, Issei, with both of his hands full of crumpled up posters, looks deeply into the blonde girl's green eyes. Asia, the two slowly get closer while each gains a deep red blush. Asia's lips are only centimeters from Issei's when all of the sudden. Yo, kid, long time no see. Issei and Asia slowly turn their heads toward the now open window. Hi, Issei, did you miss us? Asia immediately jumped behind Issei the moment she spotted a pair of fallen angel girls, crawling through the windowsill. Warner san Mitel-chan. Were you guys following me or something? Issei finally dropped what was left of his ground-up posters onto the ground. Warner, who was wearing a maroon-colored blazer along with a very short and matching skirt, nodded while showing off a slight grin as her one visible eye was directed toward the cowering blonde behind Issei. Mitelp then dashed over, which frightened Asia even more, as she tackled Issei into a hug. I missed you, so did Kala. Asia tilted her head at the scene as her frightened expression suddenly turned into a rather sour one. Excuse you, Asia then tackled Issei from behind, hugging him very tightly. I don't know who you are, but leave my Issei alone. Kala Warner was the one now tilting her head. Oh, I get it, you're the nun. Issei looked back at Warner with an awkward glance. Um, yeah, Asia, these two aren't like Rainer. They work for a douchebag named Azazel. Asia shook her head into the back of Issei's shirt. No, not true, I remember them, they worked with those exorcists and Rainer. We were coerced, Mittelt shouted while not letting go of Issei. Issei speaks up, it's true, Asia, there is this dick called Kokobiel. He's like this bully dude that is kinda strong or something. Anyway, Asia, we're gonna kick that Kokoball's ass. Kala Warner and Mittelt are not bad, not like that freed piece of shit. Issei's expression was now that of anger toward the end of his speech. Asia seems quiet for a moment and then slowly nods. Fine, but there is a pecking order when it comes to Issei. Kala Warner laughs. Ha, ah, alright, alright, Asi Argento, don't worry, we aren't gonna fly off with your boyfriend or nothing. Then it dawned on Issei. Hey, why are you guys here? Say, you haven't been following me. Right, Mittelt let go of Issei and took a step back while showing a guilty smile. The little fallen was wearing a black and white Lolita style uniform which ended in a black bow tie with a green jewel center. Orders from the guy you just called, douchebag. Kala Warner snickered. Why, what the hell does that lazy governor want with me? Issei scratched his head puzzlingly. Kala Warner slowly made her way closer toward Issei, Asia and Middelt while still grinning slightly. Boss man told us to keep an eye on you. So, that's what we did, the entire time. 
Issei thinks about what the fallen said as she continued to approach and then replied. Okay, so he told you to watch me, I get that part. The question is, why? Mitelt chuckles. He likes you, silly. Asia looks back at the little blonde girl and speaks up. So, within one week, Issei manages to get with Sona and her big sister, not to mention a fox goddess and now, now, Asia looks as if she is about to cry again. Kala Warner is now behind Asia and before the little nun can do anything, the tall fallen wraps her arms around the blonde in a very tight hug. There, there, little one. I am sure this must be a big shock to your nerves but it's going to be alright. Asia struggled at first only to relent and begin to cry into the taller woman's chest. Issei didn't know what to say or do in this situation as Midelt stood still while watching the scene play out. Kala Warner was smiling warmly as she softly ran her fingers through Asia's hair. Era era, why does this room have an overwhelming aura of sadness to it? Yasaka was now standing at the entrance of the bedroom, however the front door was not opened. Issei-kun, did you make that little girl cry? Seraphal was standing beside Yasaka. Both girls were wearing violet-colored bathrobes while each had a pillow tucked under their arms. Issei's nervousness returned in all of its anxious splendor. Um, Milky, Yusaka, I can explain. Ah, uh, yes, these two, you thought about them a few times, Issei. Era era, Yusaka smiled warmly. Gee, I heard that Azazel liked sacred gears, but isn't this a little too extensive? Seraphal looked a bit confused. Ah, uh, but it's more than just that, my old friend. The leader of the fallen feels personally responsible for, Yusaka then whispers into Seraphal's ear. What happened to Issei and that girl over there? Seraphal smiles brightly. I see, that makes sense. So, he is more than just a good TV show co-producer, turns out he's got a soft spot for my Issei. Kala Warner releases Asia, however the nun keeps her arms around the tall woman. Um, alright, the hawk-eyed angel turns her attention onto the two women at the door. Well, it looks like you're busy, Kyoto, maybe we should get going, Mitelt. Seraphal giggles. Nonsense. Have you seen the size of Issei's bed? They don't even make these in the United States that big. Yusaka nods as she giggles into her sleeve. Foo 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 foo. The fox queen then notices something under Issei's bed. Oh my, Issei. Darling, I believe your Sona might not like what's under there. Yusaka then points toward the item in question. Remembering why he was up here, Issei power slid it onto the ground and toward his bed as he instantly reached for a shoebox and proceeded to toss it past Midelt's face and out of his window. Seen outside and in the bushes of the Hyodo residence, a strange figure who was wearing only black, laid on her belly while she was staring through a thick pair of binoculars. A black pair of panties was hiding her face while a black and modest sized bra was strapped to her head. It seemed as though she was spying in Issei's bedroom window, that was until a shoebox came flying toward her. Knocking her binoculars out from her hands, the girl was now holding the open box while showing a simple expression of confusion. Placing the box down, the person pulled off her makeshift panty mask. Replacing the mask with a pair of pink-rimmed glasses, the golden-eyed girl began to grin deeply. Look at this, oh my, Kyoto, I think we may have similar taste. The girl began to pull out a plethora of different magazines and manga, all which were rated M and above. Score. No. Got that one already, but wow, okay, I could use this one too. Oh goody. Damn, he's got a great collection. Well, I've got a great collection. Now, removing her little bra from her head, the smirking girl was none other than the infamous Aika Kuryu. Scene, Issei's room. Sona's gonna be here any minute. I, 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 Issei was sitting on his bed while anxiously looking over his room for anything that might set his girlfriend off. Yusaka, who was laying on Issei's bed on her back, against her pillow giggled. Oh, don't you worry about little Sona. In fact, knock knock Issei, I'm coming in. From the other side of the door, Sona's voice was quiet but at the same time, there was a no-nonsense tone coming from it. Issei jumped from his bed into attention as the door opened. Sona, who was wearing a dark blue nightie, also had a pillow underneath her arm while suddenly freezing in place. Issei was standing nervously and his bed was full of girls. This was not what Sona had planned and she didn't like where this was going. Issei looked back over toward his bed while scratching his head nervously. 
Seraphal, Yasaka, Asia and Middelt all were underneath the covers and were quietly staring back at Sona. Not recognizing the little blonde and the taller blue-haired one, the Citri heiress wanted to ask questions however her anger started to take hold. Issei snapped his fingers and smiled nervously all of the sudden. S, Sona, I know what this looks like, but... Sona stomped her foot down as she threw her pillow at Issei. How is this not lewd? Kyoto, we are just sleeping, Sona, darling. Come on, there's plenty of room, era era. Yasaka now sat up and patted a spot next to her. Sona's rage increased several fold as her jealousy became evidently clear. No, certainly not, Issei. I'm going back to my room. The angry Citri heiress then turned on her heel and was about to walk out, that was until a golden blur reached past Issei and wrapped itself around Sona's midsection. This was one of Yasaka's fox tails as the woman was now standing on the bed as Sona suddenly became airborne. Flying past Issei's head, Sona found herself, once again, wrapped from head to toe in all nine of Yasaka's golden tails. If you're going to be difficult, you may force my hand, era era. Yasaka was now hugging a smothered and struggling Sona. Chapter 61, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 61, Sleep is for the Weak. Scene, Kyoto Home, Issei's Bedroom, Late in the Evening. Struggling against the weight of both Asia, who was hugging his lower torso while laying on his chest, and three of Yusaka's very large, golden and fluffy fox tails, the teen really had to pee. Looking toward his right, Sona was staring back at him as she herself was wrapped from head to toe in the fox queen's remaining tails as the Citri heiress had her head forced against Yusaka's large chest. With her glasses halfway hanging from her face, Sona continued to struggle because if she didn't, she might suffer suffocation by boobs. Issei, I can't sleep like this, Sona mumbled quietly. Issei nodded as he looked back at his own dire situation. Yeah, for, sure. Yasaka made a stirring sound which made both Sona and Issei look up toward her resting face. Both teens then glanced back at one another. Pissed, you guys can't sleep either. The sound of Seraphal's hushed voice forced Sona and Issei's head to the left of the bed. Seraphal was literally on the other side of Issei as Mittelt and Kalawarna, both who were clearly awake, stared back with bags under their eyes. Sona and Issei whispered at the same time, If I so much as relax, I gotta pee, I'll get smothered, really bad. Seraphal lifted an eyebrow as Mittelt nodded and Kalawarna shook her head. Seraphal thinks for a moment and then quietly replies, Oh, I see. Seraphal looks back at the two curious fallen angels next to her as they smile back at her. Well, in that case, smiling nervously back at the two, the leviathan Mao reaches over and near Issei's ear while proceeding to whisper quietly. Sona, Mittelt and Kalawarner watch while Issei nods as all they can hear is, PSSSs, 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 PSSSs. Seraphal backs up and then winks back at Issei, who is smiling back in kind. Understanding that only his upper arms were bound, Issei moved his lower arms above Asia and around one of the large golden tails. Hugging the softest fur that has ever existed, Issei did what Seraphal instructed him to do. Softly, Issei began to run his fingers through Yusaka's golden mane, softly caressing it while continuing to hug the tail. Mittelt and Kalawarner watch in wonder as the Yokai Queen's tails loosened toward the point where Sona was able to escape immediately. After wiggling his own body out from the soft prison, Issei slowly pulled and pushed Asia lightly into Yusaka, who immediately wrapped her arms around the little blonde as she did the same to the fox queen. Issei then looked over at Seraphal, who had her cheek turned while making a cute face. Alright, pay up. Sona fixed her glasses onto her face properly and was about to protest, that was until she glanced back over toward Yusaka's two bouncy death traps, which were almost hanging out of their kimono. Luckily, Asia's head was near the fox queen's neck. Remembering the deal that Seraphal whispered into his ear, Issei closes his eyes while blushing. Right before the flustered teen was able to get his lips onto his idol's cheek, Seraphal turned her head at the last second. Kisu. Opening his eyes, Issei turned several shades of red. Seraphal was receiving a kiss on her lovely lips by none other than the blushing boy. Sona grinds her teeth as she plots a means to get one up on her older sister at a later time. Attempting to pull back, Issei found that Seraphal's hand was now holding the back of his head which kept him in place. 
Smirking while still in mid-kiss, the mischievous Mao proceeded to look back at her sister as Issei noticed Seraphal's tongue forcing its way into his mouth. Veins were popping out of Sona's temple as she couldn't take it anymore. Seraphal, finally letting go of Issei, Seraphal backed away playfully. Oh boo, don't get all jealous simply because you didn't have the courage to make the move. Issei had a glazed over expression as he smiled weakly. Yasaka and Asia both woke up from the commotion as the Fox Queen immediately began to stretch both her arms, legs and tails. Asia opened her large green eyes only to see a confused Yasaka's golden eyes, staring back at her. Then the two looked over at the situation. Mittelt and Kalawarner were smiling at one another in a mischievous fashion as they still were under the covers. Meanwhile, Seraphal was laying back on her side of the bed casually with a cute grin. Asia blinked a few times. Um, Issei, what's going on? Yasaka looked at the little blonde and then at Issei while showing a tired smile. Era, Era, are you conspiring or something? The voluptuous woman then winks playfully. Coming back from his days, Issei could feel his bladder about to burst. I'll be back. The teen ran out of the room and into his bathroom while holding his crotch as the door slammed shut. Seen early morning, Issei opened his eyes only to see sheer darkness. It was warm though and it was a familiar and soft feeling. Wondering whose boobs his face was engulfed in, the teen immediately ruled Sona's out of the equation as this woman didn't smell like the Citri heiress not to mention, his nostrils had some weight against them. This meant that these breasts surely were larger than the petite Citri presidents. Nodding to himself, Issei continued his deduction. Hmm, well, these are definitely not Mittels, so that leaves Yasaka, Seraphal, Asia and possibly Kalawarner. Noticing her arms were wrapped around the hips of this mystery female body, Issei was able to slowly and covertly move one of his hands toward this woman's rear end. Softly touching the firm yet soft butt of whoever this was, Issei's face had a perverted smile, squished between the unknown cleavage. As Issei continued to feel this woman's ass, ninja style, he came to the conclusion that this would most certainly not be Asia as the little blonde had less voluptuous traits. Nodding to himself again, Issei attempted to move his arms some more, however, something soft and firm was now preventing him while at the same time, holding his hand against her rump. Issei immediately assumed this was Yusaka but something was off. The teen remembered the woman always smelling like cherry blossoms, even when they were in the baths. This woman smelled different, good, sweet, but different nonetheless. Could it be Seraphal? Maybe this is their first time like this. Issei tightened his arms around the girl's hips softly as his perverted smile increased. Wow, kid, you really do enjoy cuddling, don't you? The soft and quiet voice of Kalawarner made Issei freeze in place. Now realizing that what he thought was Yusaka's fur was in all actuality, the wings of a fallen angel. Slowly, Issei raised his head as the flutter sounds of wings unfolded enough to see some morning daylight. Immediately, the teens, sensitive eyes met with the hawk-like yellow eyes of a smiling Kalawarner. Uh, good morning, Issei spoke in a quiet voice while remembering that he wasn't sleeping alone. Good morning yourself, handsome, Kalawarner winked. Realizing that his head was still firmly packed in between the fallen angel's very generous assets, Issei released his hold around the woman's hips and began to pull away. Kalawarner suddenly shows a subtle grin. Before Issei can completely get away from the woman, her black wings, which were still partially wrapped around the boy, tightened, which pulled the surprised teen back into her. Kalawarner spoke in a quiet voice as her grin increased slightly. Hey now, did I say you could stop doing that? Apparently, Azazel Sama was wrong about you. My little devil dragon enjoys other parts of the ladies and not just Opai. Also, I really enjoyed the feeling of your hands on my ass. So, reaching under her wings, the fallen angel placed Issei's arms around her hips once again. Please, continue. Issei froze in place while having mixed thoughts involving this entire situation. Not feeling anything on her behind, Kalawarner began to lose patience. Then a thought came to mind as the angel's grin turned into a sinister one. The fallen angel spoke quietly with a threatening tone. Issei, sweetheart, darling, if you don't do as I ask, then I will take your breath away. Take my breath away, Issei looked up at the blue-haired woman confusingly. Very well then, you've forced my hand. Just, remember though, all I need is a nice fondling back there and then your breath will return. With that, 
your life is in your own hands. Cal Warner showed the grittiest grin she could muster before her shoulders tightened. Issei found that the woman's large breasts squeezed against his face, nose and mouth toward the point where he couldn't breathe. MMMMPPPHHHH. Enjoying everything about this situation, the soft and warm breasts in his face, the feeling of those soft feathers against him, it was almost perfect, almost perfect. Issei found he was running out of oxygen rather quickly and he remembered what the angel had instructed. Issei grew a grin within the overwhelming flesh of Calawarner's boobs. Well, might as well go all out. As long as we keep quiet, nobody will know. I just hope that everyone's still asleep. Issei's fingers were twitching above the very glorious behind of the fallen angel. After a moment, he finally grabbed the firm yet soft ass of Calawarner. Not feeling any release from the woman and really needing some air, Issei proceeded to fondle and fondle. Hearing a soft moan from his muffling prison, the team squeezed and caressed while really making an effort to please the fallen enough in order to get some oxygen. Seeing a bit of light coming through the black wings, Issei felt the woman's chest finally begin to release its death grip on his face. Immediately, the team took in a breath of fresh air. That's a good boy, ya did a good job. Kala Warner's yellow eyes were now in view as Issei was looking up. Issei didn't know it, but he was still grinning like a pervert. Hey, Kala Warner's eyes suddenly widened in surprise as she looked over and passed Issei. Issei wanted to know what she was looking at so he tried to move. This action was halted at the angel's wings, once again tightened up, forcing the teen back into her. What that you've got under there, fallen? This was Sona's voice. This was the worst possible outcome of this morning's antics, Issei thought. Fear and dread took over the boy's actions as he laid against the tall and buxom Kalawarner. Nanya, Kalawarner was smirking back at a bedhead-ridden Sona. Placing her glasses on, Sona replied calmly. Nanya, what's that? Nanya business. The fallen then stuck her tongue out. Seen unknown location. So, he does enjoy the finer things in life. Valley was standing near the purple viewing orb with an index finger toward his chin and he spoke to himself quietly. Kuroka's ear twitched. What was that, NYA? Did I just hear you right? Ophis, who was eating a bag of popcorn, looked back over at Valley with a suspicious yet vacant expression. What? Valley gains a blush and shakes his head rapidly. The jig is up, partner. Valley's arm glowed a blue color. Shut your mouth, Albion. The white-haired teen gritted his teeth. Kuroka snickers. You like butts. Ophis tilts her head. Before Valley could reply as his face was turning two shades of red, Kuroka interrupted. NYA, tell me, White Dragon Kun, is Valley into anything aside from fighting? The Nako then winked. Ophis nodded while still showing a vacant expression. Valley began to storm out of the room while showing his back. I only came in to let you know that we were supposed to have a meeting in the next few hours about you know what. Instantly Valley's arm began to glow again. Miss K-U-R-O-K-A, Ophisama, Valley enjoys. Shut up, Valley demanded. Butts. My partner has a thing for girls' butts. Chapter 62, Sona's Chance. A high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 62, Sweet Jealousy. Scene, Kyoto Home, Issei's bedroom, later in the morning. Era Era, this is an interesting morning, is it not? Yusaka playfully dodged a large and airborne pillow as it smacked Kalawarner on the side of her face. Sarah Falls sits up in the bed while she rubs her sleepy eyes. What's all the commotion? I haven't even had my tea yet. It's too early for this, boo. I said, let go of him, right now. Sona was standing on the bed while brandishing a pair of pillows in each hand. Kalawarner who recovered from the last attack very quickly, smirked as her wings tightened around a cocooned Issei. Asia was looking over at the struggling mass of what was under the fallen angel's wings while showing concern for Issei's sake. Mitelt was sitting on the dresser while watching the scene play out as she was clearly engaged while showing off a toothy grin. Meanwhile, Issei could feel each and every sudden movement that Kalawarner was making. Each time the woman jerked suddenly, the teen's face was subjected to bouncing pillows of the flesh variety. Issei assumed this was what it was like to be a piece of clothing. Two expressions were shown on the encapsulated Hyodo. One was of sheer joy while the other was of pure dread. The door slams open suddenly. What is going on in here? What's with all of the noise? 
A chibi Rias was asking as a small scowl was present on her face. Why are you all acting like a bunch of children? For shame, Kuno, who was standing beside Rias showed a look of disappointment. Everyone turned their attention to the smaller girls as Kala Warner and Sona froze in place. Then, from out of nowhere, both Rias and Kuno grinned maliciously. From behind each of the girls was a large pillow which both were instantly tossed in a pro-like manner. At what seemed to be mock speed, each pillow hit their mark with amazing accuracy. Sona and Kala Warner each received said pillows to the sides of their shocked faces. Instant, Ko, Rias yelled out, no mercy. Kuno added, Yusaka, Seraphal, Asia and Midelt looked toward the bed as both Kalawarner and Sona were knocked out. Slowly, Issei managed to crawl out from the mass of black wings as he was huffing and puffing. Scene, breakfast table, I see, I see. So you're Midelt Chan and you are Kalawarner Chan. My oh my, son, I never knew that I would eventually have so many grandchildren. Issei's mother was patting Kuno on her head after handing her a plate of pancakes. Mitelt nodded and showed a toothy smile. Yup and don't worry Mrs. Hyodo, we won't let nothing happen to your son, he's in good hands. Kala Warner silently nodded. Meanwhile the taller fallen was getting death stares from little Rias Grimori. I don't like this. Yusaka, who was sitting beside Issei, closes her eyes. There is nothing to worry about, Rias, darling. They work for Azazel now and I have it on good authority that he has nothing but good intentions for my husband. Please, don't jump to conclusions as you usually do. Rias puffs her cheeks out before taking a bit of pancakes. Issei's father adjusts her glasses before turning the page in his newspaper. Well, to be perfectly honest, nothing surprises me anymore. Devils, angels, gods, ha, oh well, it can't be helped. Mr. Hyodo turned another page and went silent as he smiled passively. Everyone looked around at each other and shrugged. Well, it doesn't matter. All are welcome in the Hyodo home. Also, what's this I hear about my son getting into show business with you, Seraphal Chan? Issei's mother was looking at a happy Mao as she ate a bowl of Lucky Charms cereal. Oh, Seraphal chewed quickly and swallowed. Ahem, yes, Issei is going to be on Milky Spiral. Tilting her head, Mrs. Hyodo looks back at Issei, who smiles nervously back at her. Issei can act, seen later that morning. En route to Kuo Academy. Morning, Kiba. Issei welcomed the blonde haired teen as Kiba joined in with the large group on their way to classes. Is, good, morning. Kiba proceeded to mildly stretch. The large group consisted of Akino, Kaneko, Asia, Subaki, Momo, Reya, Tomo, Subasa, Ruruko, Saji, Sona, Issei, and now the joining Kiba. Akino snickers. Rias was so funny this morning. At first, she was so very happy, but then, the moment we had to leave for school, she got so upset. Era era, I hope that Yusaka-san knows what she's doing. I don't know how much more Rias can take. The Grimori queen places both of her hands on her blushing cheeks. Kiba rolls his eyes, not getting into it, I don't want to know. Issei attempts to rub the back of his hair, however both of his hands are occupied. Kaneko held his left hand while Asia held his right. Well, I'm sure she knows better than we do, being an adult and all. The teen then nods to himself while thinking about responsible adults such as Sirzex and Graphia, however his thoughts grow darker as he then imagines an irresponsible governor Azazel. Now, images of Azazel partying at nightclubs with strippers as he is two-fisting a pair of alcoholic drinks flood the boy's mind. But she's a fox and foxes are tricky by nature. Sona speaks out with a hint of jealousy. Besides, you can't consider my sister a responsible adult, not to mention, the two of them are high school friends. Issei shrugs his shoulders, I think that you and Kuno came out alright. Adjusting her glasses while slowly turning a shade of red, Sona replies in a calm tone. Are you putting me in the same category as a little child? Is this some kind of development joke? Sona, Issei releases both Asia and Kaneko's hands and places his own into the air in fear. I would never compare you to a child. You're my s. I mean, I respect you, President. Issei blushes suddenly. Sona's anger turns into something akin to passion toward Issei's words. More so, she almost heard her boyfriend say, you're my Sona, this made the Citri heiress melt from deep inside. Oh, I see, very well then, 
Sona goes into auto mode and proceeds to straighten Issei's clumsily made tie. That's good, very good. Instantly, the student council president realized what she was doing and took a step back as a deeper blush took hold. Kaneko and Asia were looking at one another while shaking their heads in jealousy. Akino was laughing softly at the situation. Kiba was paying attention to his phone. Sona's peerage seemed to all be in individual states of shock as they watched their usually stern president dote over Issei Hiodo. Buzz buzz, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, damn right. Buzz buzz, a small and glowing circle, about the size of a United States quarter, was now floating next to Issei's head while it flashed in colors of orange and yellow. Issei, did you set your communication circle notification to that horrid song? Sona stomped her foot down. No, totally not my fault. In fear of Sona, Issei had his hands in the air once again. Buzz buzz, let's get it on, buzz buzz. Sona's eyes widened in anger. That one too, hey, I'd better answer it, right? Issei nervously smiled. The entire group, including a disinterested Kiba, circled Issei as he answered the call. Issei started to look annoyed as he felt very crowded. Tsubasa then winked. This way, the humans won't see the communication circle. We are totally not invading on your privacy. Kiba nodded. She's right, you know. Ruruko and Momo also nod. Rolling his eyes, Issei looked back at the communication circle. A small and holographic image of what looked to be an older Ravel Phoenix was staring back at him. Like her younger daughter, this woman had longer and more defined drills in her blonde hair. Along with expensive jewelry and hairpieces, this person carried the weight of great importance. Hiodo Issei, San, the woman spoke in a very courteous tone as she smiled formally. Um, hello, yes, that's me. Issei stood up straight, oh, wonderful, thank you so very much for making my call. My son informed me that you might be available later this evening for a dinner held here in the Phoenix Mansion. The woman clearly known as Lady Phoenix waited for a reply. Yes ma'am, Miss Er, Mrs. Phoenix, ma'am. Issei was very nervous as this woman was very pretty. Lady Phoenix is fine, dear. I hope you don't mind, but I was hoping that we could talk about my daughter, Ravel, while you're here. Lady Phoenix all of the sudden looked to her right at something outside of the hologram. Mom, don't, it's embarrassing. Another voice was heard and it was clearly that of Ravel Phoenix. Calm yourself, dear, let mommy handle this. Lady Phoenix turns back at Issei and smiles warmly. So would that be alright? Issei took a deep gulp and managed to simply nod. Wonderful. Well then, I'll have my daughter send you the details and time. Also, feel free to bring your friends along, there will be plenty of food. Until then, Hiodo Issei, have a great day in school. The lady of the house of Phoenix then does something unexpected and blows a kiss toward Issei before the communication ends. Sona proceeds to make a HMPH sound as her expression implies some serious anger. Slowly turning to face the puffed out cheeks of the sea tree heiress, Issei shows a very frightened smile. Hey, Sona, I had nothing to do with this, so don't, Issei got cut off immediately. You're not going alone, I'm coming along. So is Subaki and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Seraphal and Yusaka should come too. Sona then turned her back as if this discussion was over and final. At least the phoenixes won't try something underhanded with Big Sis and the Nine Tail around. Issei shrugs. That's totally fine. Lady Miss Phoenix said there was gonna be lots of food and stuff. She looks rich too, I bet they got some serious chow. Besides, I wanna show you and everyone else what I can do now. I'm gonna kick that riser douchebag's face in. Sona shakes her head as her back is still turned at Issei. It sounds like a stupid idea. I don't see the point if the match has no meaning. Besides, what if you get hurt or something? Asia squeaks suddenly. Ahem. Issei is in good hands, thank you. Most of the group look at Asia now. My twilight healing is always available for my Issei-kun. Showing a bit of anger and passion behind her words, Asia took hold of Issei's arm. Issei looked down at Asia and smiled. Thanks, Asia. Issei then turned his attention on Sona's back. See, everything is gonna be just fine. Sona shakes her head again. And what's this about Lady Phoenix wanting to speak with you, regarding Ravel Phoenix? Is something going on? 
Did something happen with you two back in the underworld, back when you went with Graphia San? Nothing happened, Sona, I told you before, she was being bullied by some assholes and I stepped in, that's all. Issei was starting to get angry at Sona's accusations. Really now, then tell me why, Hyodo. Why does it sound as if Lady Phoenix is attempting, I don't know, a marriage proposal or something? Sona stops moving and waits for a response. Marriage, marriage, who is she planning on marrying me to? Issei now looked very confused. Sona stomps her foot down. Ravel, you baka, the violet-eyed girl takes off her glasses and proceeds to run away from the group. Tsubaki uncharacteristically screams out, President, come back. As Sona continues to run away, the vice president of the student council glares back at Issei with an expression of bloodlust. Chapter 63, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 63, I, belong to you, seen Ku streets, en route to the academy. Hyodo, go after her right this instant. Otherwise, Tsubaki showed a very intimidating expression as she stood over Issei. I'll be testing to see how limber your little body is as I twist it into a pretzel. The taller vice president of the student council then took off her glasses while continuing her glare. Feeling as though his life might be in danger, without even saying a word, Issei took off after Sona. As she watched Issei run off and after her king, Tsubaki then smiled. Motivation is my specialty. The rest of the group all had individual expressions of sudden and new fear for the queen of the sea tree peerage. Seen down the street, a few blocks from the school, Issei managed to catch up with Sona and reach out for her hand. Sona stopped suddenly with her back to the huffing team. Hey hey so Sona, please stop running, haha hey, you're fast, you know. Issei took a few more deep breaths. Look, I know you think that I'm just some perv who is gonna go after the next girl that just comes my way, but you'd be wrong. Sona flinched. At first, before Rainair, it's totally something I was into, having a harem, full of beautiful chicks. But, Issei takes a good look around him to make sure others are out of earshot. To be honest, that chick kinda messed me up. Rainair I mean, she um, well, she hurt me. I know this sounds like a bad repeat or something, but ever since that time, I guess I just was trying to fill that hole. Dying sucks, you know. But hey, I thought that Rias and those guys were going to just make all of those stupid thoughts just go away. And for a time, yeah, it helped. But it was more of like a band-aid which eventually got forcefully ripped off. Then I met you, ha ha ha. Sona, meeting you, that was more like getting stitches. Issei began to tear up a bit while smiling. It's like I told you before, no matter what happens, even if you hated me, I'd always consider you my number one. Sona finally turned around and what Issei saw melted him from deep within. Still holding onto her glasses in one hand, Sona's violet eyes were full of tears. The only saving grace in this whole situation was the fact that she was smiling. You really mean that? I mean, compared to all of the other girls, especially there, um, Sona began to blush while using her free hand to wipe away her tears. Sona, what part of, I love boobs, do you not understand? It's true, I am indeed a pervert but I am actually proud of it. Issei was using his perverted smile after those words. As her expression begins to shift from a smile to now a look of rage, Sona was interrupted as Issei straightened his own face into a serious one and continued. But if you think for one moment that size matters, you'd be dead wrong. Also, I think I told you this before, but you, specifically, give me this natural feeling of peace whenever we are, well, you know, Issei is now the one blushing. Sona tilts her head, so you really do like it when I do that? Oh my god, yes. Ouch. Issei grabs his head in pain. Sona does the same thing. Damn it. Hyodo. After a few more moments, the two teens look back at each other. Issei then smiles brightly and holds his arms out. Come on, President. You already know who I belong to, right? The teen continues to have his arms extended. Blushing, Sona places her glasses back on and then goes in for the hug. Baka, holding the sea tree heiress in his arms, the smiling Issei simply nods and closes his eyes. Yup, that's me, Baka, through and through. Thanks for putting up with me, Sona. Playfully, Sona punches Issei in his chest. Shut up. Scene, Kuo Academy. 
Leaning against the stone wall that separated the campus from the rest of the city was Aika, Murayama and Kates. The three girls had bored expressions until they all got sight of Issei. At first, all three seemed pretty happy to see him, that was until they saw the entourage that accompanied him. Scowling now, Kates whispers in a very soft tone. What is up with Hyodo? First he gets with the occult research club girls. Then Rias Ramori is suddenly absent for, family reasons. Now he has the student council in his grasp. Aika nods while grinning. Add the fact that he has that older blonde lady. I wonder if it's true that he is really married. Murayama shakes her head rapidly. No, no there has to be a reason for all of this. Look at him. We are talking about Issei Hyodo. I am willing to bet that he is somehow blackmailing those girls. Kates tilts her head. You really think so? Murayama squints as she stares deeply at a smiling Issei, who is in the distance while he is holding President Sauna's hand. It's either that, or something else. Either way, Aika shows an excited expression. How about we interrogate him? Kates blushes. Isn't that going overboard? Murayama nods. It's the only way. First, we need to apprehend him. Aika replies before Kates can interrupt. Then we need to have him bound. Kates shakes her head. That's insane. We aren't Yandere. Aika and Murayama turn their attention onto Kates as they both grin. Embrace the darkness. Aika giggles. Scene, homeroom. Broeski. What's up? Eyes. Matsuda nervously smiled. Yo. Sup, my dude. Motohama also had an almost embarrassed looking smile. Um. Hey guys. I thought you were pissed about me being in the student council. Issei showed an expression of suspicion. Oh. It's totally cool. Hell, to be honest, we're just jealous that you've got all the hot girls in the school. Motohama spoke truthfully, not to mention, that MILF that came to school the other day. Matsuda now looked sad. Issei, how do you do it? Also looking sad, Motohama added. Please teach us your ways. Issei rubs the back of his head before the homeroom teacher announces the beginning of class. Just stop being open perverts. Keep it deep inside and try not to let it out. If you can manage that, you will be successful. Issei spoke quickly before walking to his desk. Both of the idiot duo looked at one another and then shrugged. Ahem. Good morning class. Before we start with our usual schedule, I'd like to announce that I will be stepping down as your teacher. I will be relocated to another classroom that needs my attention, meanwhile, I'd like to introduce you to your new homeroom teacher. Please, everyone, stand up. The homeroom teacher began to gather his personal things from the desk as the classroom door opened. Issei's eyes widened suddenly at the sight of the woman walking through the door. She was wearing a black and tan blazer skirt combination along with large and blue rimmed glasses that were box shaped. Bright and blue eyes were behind those large glasses. Her black hair was tied back into a single braid, which was laying across one of her shoulders. Everyone, this is Sensei. Erm, is it, Sensei Sarah, Chan? The teacher was looking at the transfer paperwork while trying to make sure what he was reading was correct. The female teacher who was clearly Seraphal Leviathan bowed and then winked cutely toward the class. That's right, my name is Sensei Sarah Chan and I'll be your new homeroom teacher for the year. Please take care of me. Seraphal then looked in Issei's direction while proceeding to wink once more. Blushing while feeling confused and frustrated, Issei just stood in place while pretending to look at the trees outside of the window. Aika, Murayama and Kates, who happened to be sitting next to one another in their desks all looked at one another with suspicion. But, for formality purposes, my last name is Shitori, but please, Sensei Sarah-chan is much better, don't you think? Seraphal then takes her seat as the other teacher awkwardly leaves the room. Shitori, she can't be related to Sauna, could she? Kates whispered toward Aika and Murayama. They do look similar, but you know, there is something about her, something familiar that I just can't place my thumb on. Murayama whispers back, Aika then adds, in a whisper. Did you notice the strange look she gave Hyodo? What's up with that? Murayama grins. We will get our answers, from Hyodo himself, at lunch. Aika nods happily while Kates looks nervous. All right, well, let's go ahead and to roll call and then afterwards, I'll tell you a little about myself, how does that sound? Seraphal begins to unpack a small plush purple bag with random items including a picture of young Sona. 
Murayama, Kates and Ika all nod while looking at one another. I knew it, she is Sauna's sister. Ika grinned, Kates argued, that's not correct, it was my suspicion, not yours. Scene, lunch bell, Issei noticed Seraphal looking at some paperwork in the hallway and decided to get a few answers. Um, Sensei Shitori, Issei looks around to make sure nobody is around. Seraphal looks back at Issei and blinks a few times. Try again, Hiodo, Hihi. I came up with that nickname so you could call it to me in class. Go on, say it. Issei rolls his eyes but can't help how cute Seraphal is acting right now. Sensei Sarah Chan, ah yes, that's much better. What can I do for you, hee hee, my little cute student? Seraphal winks, geez, so when were you going to tell me about this new job of yours? Don't you have responsibilities in the underworld, not to mention, Issei whispers carefully. Milky Spiral, Seraphal giggles loudly, oh, Hiodo, you shouldn't worry about your dear sensei like that, haha, ha, please now, go to lunch. The cute teacher then whispers. We can talk about it before that dinner party thing at the Phoenixes, alright. Seraphal showed a serious smile. Deciding that this was acceptable, Issei nods. Alright, Sensei, I'll be going, but I've gotta ask. Does Sona know? Seraphal grins. Issei nervously shrugs. Well, please don't involve me in this, I've got plenty to stress about. Oh, you must mean the heartfelt talk you had with my sister this morning, right? Seraphal playfully winks once more. Issei was about to say something, that was until Ika came strolling by. Hiodo, whatcha doing for lunch? Oh hey, sensei. The girl smiled with her usual smirk hidden under it. Hello Kuryu chan well, I'll be going now. Behave yourselves, you too. Seraphal then walks down the hall. What do you want? Issei tilts his head. Are you deaf? I asked if you wanna have lunch with me. Ika continued to smile. Um, well, Issei looked around to see if any of his friends were around. Not seeing anybody, Issei figured that maybe Ika might not be such a bad person to eat with. In fact, it might feel a bit normal for a change, to sit with another normal human person. Though, Ika was anything other than normal. Yeah, okay, lead the way, Ika. Issei cringed while getting this overwhelming feeling of doom. Scene, Hyodo home. Rias, that's not fair. You already ate four of them and I only had two. Kuno was chasing a laughing little Rias Grimori around the living room. In her mouth was the last pork bun, as she continuously dodged little Kuno's attempts at catching her. Um, I'm bigger than you, so I need more calories. Rias chewed and swallowed her treat. Mommy, Rias is being a meanie again. Kuno ends the chase while having a temper tantrum. Era era, both of you need to calm down. Also, Kuno dear, how about you come along with mommy? We are going, to have a picnic. Yasaka was poking her head out from the kitchen. Rias shrugs. See, you're gonna have more food anyway, so I don't see what you're complaining. Kuno puffs her cheeks out. If you keep this up, you will always be small, while I grow up. That all depends on if you live that long. Rias was now the one chasing Kuno around the living room. Well that's all for now see you in the next part.